Do your sound effects sound like this? When they could sound like this? Unless you have a killer platformer or you're going for that old school vibe, you should always be using dynamic sounds in your game. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is my custom sound effects mixer, and today I'm going to show you how you can build one. We're going to set it up to generate dynamic pitches so all your footsteps, swings, abilities have their own unique sound instead of using a repeating 2D sound. And it's just a much better, easier way to add immersion to your game, and it just brings all your scenes to life. This is going to be a very simple, uh, beginner-friendly blueprint, so let's dive right in. So there's three main ways we can add sound effects. One, most beginners will use a simple 2D sound node and just slap an MP3 in there. However, dot waves are preferred. Two, novices might use various randomizer nodes for their pitch and they may even attach a sound attenuation directly in their logic. And three, advanced audio creators will use sound cues for simple randomizers while meta sound source can create complex mixers with dynamic adaptive sounds using variables. Think footsteps changing determined by speed or your weapon sounding different when hitting various sources. And they will also have attenuations baked directly into the meta sound source. So the mixer we'll be creating simply solves the limiting problem of option two and gives you a mixer from option three. So you can randomly cycle between two groups of blended audio samples. Feel free to pause here or screenshot if you'd like to reference this later. Unreal does expect dot waves for most audio in your game, especially with sound cues and effects, though MP3s can be streamed at runtime. You can use 8, 16, and 24-bit PCM dot waves. However, 24-bit will usually be compressed down at runtime and 32 can be imported as well but will be converted down to 16-bit for performance. 8 to 192 hertz are supported with 44.1 or 48 hertz as a standard for game audio. Higher rates over 92 will be resampled down as well. Best practice is to use 16-bit PCM dot waves with 44.1 or 48 hertz audio files. Now that we know the basic structure for our sounds, let's build our mixer. Alright, so as always, we're going to start by creating a new folder in your content folder. And I already have one, so I'm just going to name this Audio 2, but you want to stay organized. And once you're in here, you're going to right click, you're going to go to Audio, and you're going to click Meta Sound Source. So once you have this, we're going to make this MS Mixer. Alright, so we're going to open that up, and you're going to see a few nodes here. You're going to have your inputs and your outputs. We're going to need a lot of space here, so let's put these over there. And we're going to start with our input and we're going to start by making a couple trigger counters and selects. We're going to take a regular trigger counter here. And then on trigger, we're going to go trigger select and you want two. So this one down here, we're going to go count to index. And once you have that, we're going to create a random bull from our out zero and from our out one we're going to go up here and you'll see why in a little bit we're going to do a random float okay so this is just to keep um the shape <laughs> of this graph as it's going to get a little crazy soon so from uh on next we're going to go trigger select two once again or we could have just duplicated the other one and now we're going to connect the float down to here and the index is actually going to go to your random bull. And that's going to create this node in the middle here to connect them. And by default, the seed is perfectly at negative one. And basically that gives it a random true or false value to the Boolean. Um, if this was a positive number, it would actually be a set pattern that um, this would play in. But because it's negative one, it's actually a random value. Okay, so from here we're going to make our wave players now. And these are all going to be mono 1.0. And now we need uh, five more of these. So we're going to go Control D. And we're going to create a little pattern here. We're going to do three on top, three on bottom. And just like that. All right. So from this trigger select, this is what's going to cycle back and forth between the two. We're going to connect here to play, and now we're going to connect these all up. 
from our random float here, this is going to go into all our pitch. So this is going to give us a random pitch into all our sounds. And just like we did for the float, we're going to do the same thing for our mono mixer, which we need to just click anywhere and grab that. We're going to grab six since we have six wave players. And from here, we're going to take your first input into out mono. And you want to try to keep these in order. Um, that way, you know which one you're changing the volume to. And it's going to look a little messy. <laughs> Like a bunch of wires going on here like a stereo system all right so from here we're going to take our mono output and connect that and then for our wave players we do need another trigger select two once again and this is going to be to our final output so this is where our pitch comes in and this is the magic of our blueprint right here what you want to do is keep the values in a pretty like tight range. Um, you don't want to go anything too low past a negative four or five. It starts to become a little unrealistic. So we're going to do a minimum value of negative four and a positive maximum value of two to give a range of six for your um, sounds to vary between. But you'll hear just how much of a difference that'll make. If I were to click play, you'll be able to see the lines moving back and forth randomly choosing different columns and now you can change your sounds This is on take damage for my spiders. As a finishing touch, we're going to now add a sound attenuation to our Meta Sound Source mixer. So if you go all the way down on your details panel, you'll see this box right here where you can add one in. And basically, what this does is it defines um, like a range that the sound can be heard and controls how a sound um, behaves in like a 3D space. All right, so we're gonna go back to our audio folder and you're gonna right click, go back to audio. But this time we're gonna do a sound attenuation. Just name that SA test. And we're gonna double click that. And most of these settings are just gonna leave the same. Um, we're just gonna drop the inner radius a little tighter to 100 and our fall off to 2000. And if you wanted to get into a little more advanced settings, you could enable listener focus and that'll make your sounds fade off in the distance. Um, if you're using footsteps, for example, you could have it so you hear them from a certain range. And with that, you could also go to your character blueprint here, find your event begin play, mine's right here, and you would need your player controller from input device, and you could actually do this neat trick and go set audio listener override. And if you put this to your mesh now, anything that your mesh is looking at, so your character, yeah, uh, this will be where your 3D sounds will be heard from. Um, another trick is to use your follow camera. So when you turn the camera, those you'll hear the sounds from the direction that you're facing. And with that, we can go back to our mixer now. We're going to scroll back down, go to attenuation, and you can add yours right here. You can save that, and you're all set. All right, so that concludes our setup. What you can do now is basically make folders for all your characters, hit reacts, weapons, um, and just have a whole library here. And every time you need to make a new sound effects, you can just go back to your mixer, duplicate this, and you're good to go. You can uh, start making your own custom sounds. Also remember that your mono mixer right here is your volumes, so you can edit these up and down to uh, balance your sounds. It's just a lot of fun to play with. So if you even wanted to, you could actually create two more of these into this mixer it maxes out at eight um, if you wanted to duplicate this process here you could technically have two mono mixers and have 16 wave players um, i feel like that would get very messy at that point three uh, seem to be like the maximum uh, like perfect middle ground here for mixing sounds together so that's what i went with but um I hope some of you end up using this, and if you found this helpful, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will be back next week with a, another video, so until next time, see you guys.